if you could approach just a little bit more thank you so you will realize that the building behind me has cross signs right there there so this used to be a church but initially it was another building we call this the monument of androklos in the greek mythology androklos is the mythical founder over here Androclus is the mythical founder of the city of Ephesus. So we have this mythological story that says that anciently at the other side of the Aegean Sea there used to be an island and in that island there used to live a prince oh god there used to live a prince named Androclus, okay? This Androclus was looking for a new place in order to construct his new city, but he didn't know which would be the more convenient spot to put a city, okay? So he went to the temple of Apollo, he consulted with the oracles, he asked them, I would like to find a new city, where should it be? Like where would be the most convenient place to construct a new city? And the oracles, they usually told in forms of poems that are hard to understand, they told him that you're supposed to construct your new city in a place that was shown by the fish and the pig. He didn't understand anything either. Okay, he came here looking for a new place. They were spending the night here in a camp with the soldiers. They started to grill some fish, okay? And the boar, actually, came between the trees, took the fish and started running. And Androclus thought that this was the indication. That was the news of the oracles and he constructed the city of Ephesus exactly in this area. Right now for us, this is a mythological account, but mythology meant religion to Greek people. So they wrote it down in a marble tablet, tablet and they put it here, along with the statue of Androclus himself. Okay? This pagan building later on was recycled by the Christian Byzantians okay, in order to construct the new church. That's why we have the cross signs. But ancient used to call the Androclus Memorial. That's what it's saying. Right in front of you, you're going to see the library. I'm going to explain you here because they have no space here. So many people right now. It's called the Library of Celsius. Okay, Celsius is one of the most famous governors of the city. He was all over a popular character. And he used to love books, literature, okay? Anything related to mythology. After his death, okay, his sons, in order to honor his memory, started to collect some money from the city and they founded this library. Okay, it's called the Library of Celsius from the second century. So once you go in, you will see that only the facade was reconstructed by the archaeologists, but the type of marble that they used to have inside of the temple is quite different than the marble that they have on the ground. This is Egyptian marble, okay? And they used to pay a lot of money in order to transfer this quantity of the special marble up until here to the city of Ephesus. A library is not just a place that you would find books. If you needed to hire a private tutor, you would also go to the library, okay? You would find tutors, for example, in math, in rhetoric, in many different branches. That's why we know that the schools of Ephesus was quite famous, actually, and people from all over the Roman world used to come here in order to study. So it also has the function of a school. We do not have the books, okay? And by the books, I'm talking about parchment rolls, of course, ancient that they used. We know that it used to hold at least 10,000 volumes of parchment rolls. Mark Anthony, we talked about them in Tarsus, right? Mark Anthony and Cleopatra. Mark Anthony sent all the books of the libraries of Asia Minor as a present to Cleopatra, okay? They transferred it to the famous Library of Alexandria, which was burned to the ground in the fifth century. So today we do not possess any of the original books of the collection, but from the travel accounts, we know that the library was actually quite important and people used to come here. And it's at the center. In other Roman cities, you wouldn't find a library in the center. This is something weird, right? What you can see over there, people are entering right now, is the latrina, that's the mm -hmm. toilet, right? We saw a small version once we went to the church in Laodicea, they have a lot bigger space here. What matters here is the sewage system, as we told you, not all the cities used to have it. And this is not necessarily a math bathroom. We know that people used to come here in order to do some more discreet meetings, okay? At the center of Latrina, you would have a pool that produces a lot of sound. So if two people are speaking at one side and the two at the other side, they're not able to listen to each other. 
So most historians theorize that they actually had these latrina spaces in the city because these people have already bathroom in their houses, okay? So they're coming here in order to discuss something important when they need to chat in a more discreet manner. Once you go inside, you will see that there are lots of seats with holes in them. Those are the individual tablets. They used to sit next to each other. There's nothing in between. Of course, anciently, they used to have a toga. They didn't use any pants. So it was a lot more easier to lift it up and sit. Do you want more details about the toilet? <laughs> I have many, okay? So once they sit and start using the toilet, you know that the sewage system was passing right under. And once you go inside the latrina, you will see that right in front of the seat, there are some tiny water canals, okay? So there's like running water. That is the water that they use for cleaning. So they would have the stick, wooden stick, which was attached to a sponge, okay? You would put the sponge into water, clean yourself, then pass it to the next person, okay? You would just go around like this. And yes, they used to have toilet papers, usually. Yeah, they used like leaves, other materials, something different, but this was the toilet system. I'm a huge nerd <laughs> about the social life of the Roman people, okay? So, latrinas are quite interesting. In your free time, if you want to go inside and take a look, and you can also do that. That's the saying okay? of the who got the short end of the stick. <laughs> oh. Good theory. I'm not sure, but... It's, yeah. it's be, fir be first in line. Be first in line. Then they so, also have tunnels? Oh, also keep in mind that they were paying. It's not a free service. You have to pay in order to go inside the latrina. Exactly. So, Let's visit the library right now. That's the most famous part. Come with me. Then where do we go after?